If you want to grow your spiritual life, then listen to this message as we learn a lot of things. Now listen to me. Experientially, when the Holy Ghost moves inside of your spirit man, experientially, it is exactly as though your spirit is moving. Go into your Bible and begin to study from the Pauline epistles, from Romans, study to Revelation. Anytime you see spirit, if you interpret it to mean Holy Spirit, it's correct. If you interpret it to mean your human spirit, it's correct. Because of this economy, the mingo spirit. When the Holy Ghost moves inside of you, you don't, you don't, <laughs> it, it, it's as though it's your spirit moving. Because the two have become one so that you can legitimately have access to the things of God through the Spirit of God. And one of the items of the things of God is what I've been advertising since we started the lecture is a mystery that was hidden before the foundation of the world. And that mystery is about your life. It contains the direction that God wants your life to take in order for your life to fulfill his will. It contains the timing. Even though you are taking that direction, eh? there is a timing. God will put you through a process for a certain time so that when that time is accomplished, you can enter into your inheritance. It, it contains the strategy that God is going to make available to you in a time where things are failing upon the face of the earth. So your own life will be advancing because you are being thrusted forth by the power of a mystery that God sealed in himself before the foundation of the world. So you can say, when men are being cast down, when there is a casting down, in your own life, the experience is different because you are running on a different principle. There is a lifting up for you because that mystery existed before the foundation of the world and the princes of this world they don't know it so the first on the list of the things of God is the mystery that is hidden in God before the foundation of the world if you operate by it Satan will not be able to track you the second in the list of the things of God is the counsel of God counsel is when God uses his wisdom to give you direction out of a certain trouble. Just in case you are in this place tonight and you've noticed some, a, a trouble, there's a trouble in your life and you are looking for solution for it. Um, the solution to that trouble is to access the counsel of God. The counsel of God. Anyone that is under the sound of my voice right now, if after this lecture today, you start this night in the area of that trouble that is in your life, you start to stand before God this night and to ask him for counsel. And you do it for three nights. You will have counsel. And this one I'm telling you is a prescription by the Spirit. The 19th day of, was it September 2019? invited to preach in a certain city came into the hotel and jesus came to me and said i've come to set you free so that where i am there also will my servant be it was a mystery i said i prayed on it and then god gave me insight eventually the insight came much later it was insight about my resignation and i resigned today one year later, my office was scrapped. Now, the reason why I was not caught up in that confusion was because I received what? Counsel. So, another thing that is part of the things of God is the counsel of God. So, in every matter, in every circumstance, in every situation, God has a counsel about it. This counsel did not just evolve. It existed before God created things. It's older than the situation. And when you apply the counsel of God, you will prove that Satan is still behind in technology because he will not be able to understand the technology that you are adopting. It is superior to what he can handle. So in the times of trouble, that's when we know the people that are connected to God vitally because they will have counsel. And counsel will give them a headway in life. 
So it doesn't matter the situation you find yourself in. If you have access to counsel, you can upturn that situation and use it as a springboard to launch into higher pedestals of glory. When we have the mind of God, and someone is owing you money, and according to the law, you can do one or two things to the person's life to make him uncomfortable. And then you are in intercession one morning, and then the mind of God becomes available to you. And God is telling you, let it go. And then he doesn't look very masculine. He says, let it go. And you will not even know why he says, let it go. Because the moment you let that go, you now qualify to enter into something in his grace that is way superior to what he asks you to live. When you operate by the mind of God, more and more it will be difficult for the devil to manipulate you. Are you there? Oh, you're not there. Do you know what we call curses? Curses operate through decision-making processes. When you find someone that is cursed, the way you know are the decisions the person makes. Negative spirit will be compelling the person to make decisions that will entrap the person, that will tie up the person, that will frustrate the person's life. Are you there? Also, the way you know a man of wisdom is that in the midst of situations that are pressing, terrible, he makes decisions that probably look foolish at the onset. Because that's how wisdom looks when it is being implemented. It looks like foolishness. It looks like weakness. That's how it looks. But over time, you now begin to see that that thing that looked like foolishness was actually the shape of power. See, this, what I'm talking about is beyond the scope of what human mentality can capture. It must be given to you by the Holy Ghost. I'm just showing you the reason why we need to pursue intimacy with God. I've not entered into the actual matter of intimacy, knowing that God is spirit. There's a way you engage the spirit being. The actual matter I've not entered there. Our only hope of tapping into the mystery that God put over our lives when he planned to make us excel in our generation, our only hope of entering into that mystery is by the Holy Ghost. Your only hope of tapping into the things of God, the counsel of God, the mind of God, the power of God, is by the Spirit of God. So you can only access the things of God. You know what God did in the New Testament? He made us to have access to his things and to use his things to prosecute our calling upon the face of the earth. To use his wisdom. To use his counsel. To use his power. To use his grace. All of these things are available at our disposal. But the extent to which you can tap into them. Is determined by your intimacy with the spirit. So many years ago. I came to this knowledge. That there were so many miscalculations. Satan had, there were so many mis miscalculations of Satan in the Bible and the reason was because Satan was deficient in a certain kind of knowledge. It was when I arrived here I discovered that the, that knowledge was, was ordained before the foundation of the world. And I realized also that through the spirit I can access those hidden things and those hidden things will put me ahead of Satan. Ahead of the devil. My life will no longer be a struggle but it will be a, a continuum of grace, a continuum of expressing God's excellency over darkness. And I like that one. So I knew that the only way to operate that way is that I need to cultivate intimacy with God. I hope I've been able to encourage you enough about intimacy. All right, in view of the above, I will not continue with this scripture again because it's supposed to encourage you show you why you need to be intimate with God. All the reasons are in this scripture. You begin to see the limitations of humanity. Even the best of us. The brightest of us. The brainiest among us. The most beautiful among us. There is a limitation. You cannot outsmart Satan with your beauty. You can't outsmart him with your intelligence. But you can outsmart Satan if you have access to the economy of the mystery. That's what I want to say.